What's up, everybody, and welcome back to A Beer Day with TK. It is a brisk fall afternoon here in Finley, Ohio, and I'm hanging out in the beer shed getting ready to check out a new beer. Now, the beer I have today is La Chouf Blonde. Now, if you saw some of the other videos I did, I picked up a four-pack of these with this glass as part of a gift set. So the one thing I love about Christmas in the U.S. is it's the one time a year when you really start to see these beer gift sets pop up in the stores. So if I go to Meyer or some of the local shops, you can pick up a lot of these different sets that come with a glass usually. So I went there yesterday actually to do some food shopping, and they had a uh, nice Delirium Tremens one. So it was Delirium Noel. I think you got two bottles plus a Delirium glass, and it was about 26 bucks, I think, maybe 27 bucks, which I thought was a pretty good deal because you would probably pay 12, 13 bucks a piece for the big bottles of Delirium. So, you know, you kind of get the glass for free. Usually that's something I get as gifts for my friends or I'll buy them as a gift to myself. And that's what this was, like I said, part of it. Now, when I did the last videos, I think I messed up and I thought I bought out my Le Chouf glass and I accidentally bought out the Delirium one. So I do actually have the correct glass today and it says Find Marcel and it has all the little gnomes on it. So this is the Le Chouf Blonde and there's a little paragraph it's on the back of this bottle, but I don't know, maybe Belgians have really great eyesight compared to me. This is in like a two-point font. Like, it's it's criminally small. It says artisanal Belgian gold ale, and then the writing goes like this. So on on tap, it looks like they have a copy of it. It says, the gnomes of Fairyland are particularly fond of this golden beer. Le Chouf, with its slight hoppy taste, combining notes of fresh coriander and fruity tones, is the drink which gives them their zest for life. At least that's what these imps say when they're thirsty. Their secret used to be jealously guarded from one generation to the next until the day they shared the recipe with humans to seal their friendship. Uh, of all the legends from this wonderful region of the Belgian Ardennes, the tale of La Chouf is one which most merits retelling. Now, it's no secret. I'm a fan of the La Chouf beers in general. Um, the La Chouf cherry one, I think, is... Probably one of my favorite beers in the world, although I am partial to cherry. That and Mad Elf from Trogues, I absolutely love. Both are, are cherry-type beers, similar kind of beers. So this one comes in at 8%, so decent ABV to it. 20 IBUs, and ratings-wise, does very well. So untap 3.82, Beer Advocate, 4.21, overall 94, outstanding. And this is a 330 milliliter bottle, so 11.2 fluid ounces so a lot of times you may notice if you get european bottles or cans in the u.s the smaller cans are usually 12 ounce or yeah 12 ounce cans and you have 16 ounce cans and bigger ones uh, but 12 ounce is usually the default like a regular size soda or beer can where a lot of times in europe it's 11.2 i think it's because of the the milliliter thing works out slightly different when you do the math but still thrilled to be able to try it the caps on these are crowns as my euro friends may call them are always great they're very um, artistic and it has marcel the gnome on there and I actually think when you had the gift box, it told you all the different gnomes and their names. So I'll save this cap to go in my giant. I have these cans full of caps. I don't know what. I'm going to do something artsy with them at some point in time. One time, a couple years back, my wife took them and made, like, framed them. And it looked pretty neat. But I think, I, I don't know if it's still here or if I broke it. I don't remember. Look at that. Ooh. So... Bottle art, got our little friend Marcel there cruising on his unicycle, cruising through Belgium. Glass. <laughs> Strangely, because all the little gnomes are all around the glass, it's a little harder to see what's going on inside. If I go to the color, my Brew HQ chart, I'm going to say this is maybe like a six or a seven, like a deep gold kind of color. It has a bit of an orange issue. Ooh, now I see it. There's a fair amount of carbonation. There's bubbles going frantic in there. But you got to get it at right, the right angle because the head's here. The gnomes are here. So I got to kind of get underneath of it to see all the, the, ferment, the fermentation, the carbonation that's going on there. It looks nice. Let's give it a sniff. Oh, well, I guess I should mention the head. Obviously, there's plenty, right? I got three, four fingers of white head here because of my poor nose. Pick up a little spicy thing going on like you do in a lot of the Belgian beers. I kind of like that smell. I mean, I know it's like the yeast or whatever in there. It's got like a spicy, yeasty kind of smell. And that's about it. I mean, maybe a slight bit of like citrus zest or something. I don't know if it's, can't tell if it's like lemony or orangey or something. But you can pick up a little bit of a zesty thing. You pick up the spices. It smells good. All right, let's give it a shot. Cheers, my friends. All right, 
God, look at that head. It's just chilling. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to feel bad drinking through it. It's going to give me the big white mustache, too. So if I don't inhale it. That's a tasty beer. <laughs> Body. Medium. Probably the higher end of medium. Um. It's not quite full, but there's a little more to it, which I quite like. I'm a fan of body-owned beers, especially like bigger beers. There's nothing worse than you get a nice big beer like a stout or a you know, higher ABV, and it's just some watery mess. Very nice body on this. Flavors. First thing I think I get hit with is kind of like that Belgian spice thing up front. Then you kind of get some maltiness. Then you get a little bit of, of hot bitterness to it, but it's not a lot. What did I say? It was 20 IBUs. It was pretty good. Um... The spiciness, it's almost like lightly peppery. I know it said it was coriander is in it, and I know there's a lot of coriander tastes in a lot of the Belgian beers, um, and I think you, you pick it up, because if you're familiar with it, I think that's the sp one of the spices that you pick up here. I think you definitely get the yeast, but I think you also do get a distinct kind of coriander taste. Just strange. I'm not a huge fan of it in food, but I don't mind it in beers because, you know, you pick it up a lot in beers and I don't kind of mind it. Um, you do get definitely um, some some sugary kind of sweetness as well. But they all balance nicely off of each other. Um, yeah, I mean, you get the little peppery thing. You get some hoppiness, but it's not overpowering. It's just kind of there and kind of subtle and underlying the entire thing get a bit of malty sweetness. You also get the, the yeast in there. It's a well-made beer. Um, the other thing is for 8%, I don't really think you pick it up whatsoever. Now, I know there are bigger Belgian beers. We have some 10 and 12 percenters. Um, but I know for the average person, especially depending where you're at in Europe, I know a lot of, t a lot of beers are maybe 35 to 4 and a half, something like that. Um, like when you go to England, it's one thing that always surprised me. You know, you're like, why can people drink 50 pints? And it's like, well, because they're just 3%. You could probably drink infinite 3% beers. Um, in the U.S., I'd say average is about 5%. When you go higher, maybe you pick it up. For 8%, I don't think you pick up the alcohol whatsoever. Not distracting. Um, this is a beer I want to sit and savor and enjoy it. But for some reason, I also want to drink it because it just tastes so good. It's, I'm drinking it probably quicker than I should. Magnificent beer. Um, like I said, I think we've done three of the four Le Chouf ones that came in this gift set. The last one is the one I'm kind of on the fence with, and I know I haven't had it yet. Um, it's the IPA. And it's something that kind of weirds me out. Like, I'm used to Belgian breweries doing blondes, brown, you know, the Bruins, and they're doing quads and, and triples and all this stuff. Um, but when I start seeing breweries like that doing IPAs, I just think to myself, like, I, I don't know, man. I mean, I know IPAs are the trend. If you go to a brewery in America, they got 20 beers on the board, 15 or 18 of them are IPAs, and you're just like, oh, God, what about the rest of us? So I understand people are trying to keep up with trends, but that one will be up next, so I'm kind of interested to see what that's like. But this one, Le Chouf Blanc, big thumbs up, two thumbs up. I absolutely love this. I could drink this all day long. Well worth the ratings. Like I said, 382 on tap, 421 Beer Advocate, 94 outstanding. I would say this is outstanding. Hopefully you think this video is outstanding. If you do, please hit that thumbs up button and hit um, subscribe. If you want to see more videos like that, again, the subscribe link is there. Also, there's a link for my friend, the Ginger Yeti, down in the um, description down below. So if you're interested to sign up for his channel, I know he'd appreciate it. Hit that link. If you have any comments or questions, if you've had Le Chouf Blonde, let me know what you think about it. What other Le Chouf ones should I be looking out for? Like I said, I did, this pack was the Mick Chouf, this... Uh, the IPA I haven't done yet. I know I did a video on the cherry, but it didn't come in the pack. But what other what other Le Chouf ones are out there I should be looking for? Because you can find these in the U.S. So if there are others, I'd like to hunt them down. Let me know in the comments. Hey, till next time. Cheers.